crazy to hear your story in here over the last 43 years, 18 years, whatever you want to look at mm -hmm. and compare you probably even what, six years ago mm -hmm. to today yeah. is insane. Mm. And it should give a lot of people hope that watch. Yeah, that's all I want to give. I, I tell people that the one thing that you can take, you can take my money. The, the, the being broke wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part for me was being hopeless. <sighs> See, most people think that the money, we, money's fluid. You can make money. Yeah. I could have went and worked at McDonald's. I could have found a way. But when you don't have hope, that's a scary place to be. And I was hopeless. If you have hope, you're going to make it. That's it. Man. If, if you just have hope, you might not know how you're going to make it. You may not know when. You may not know where. You may not know why. If you have hope, you'll make it. Hope's the one thing you can't take from me. You, listen, you can beat me up. Throw me in a, I, I, got, I was homeless, sleeping in my car, and I had hope. Because I knew that I had the secret ingredient. If I didn't quit, I knew I was going to make it. That's right. I didn't know it was going to happen as fast. So I'm, I'm going to circle way back around. Right. I didn't know it was going to happen. If I have, did I ever dream I was going to make this money? I always dreamed it, but I didn't realize what happened this fast. And it took a long freaking time too, though. You know? Um, it feels like it was yesterday that I was living in my car. Wow. I mean, let, let's talk about it. The one thing that I didn't have when I was broke was perspective. Yeah. Like now, I told you, I, I'm, I'm doing some intermittent fasting. Like when I was broke and I didn't eat till lunchtime, I felt sorry for myself because I thought I was hungry. Now I call it intermittent <laughs> fasting. <laughs> yeah, It's all about perspective. That's right. How do you look at things? And so then I was broke, but I still had my health. I was broke, but I still had friends. I was broke and I had a golden opportunity. Didn't matter. Listen, don't matter what company it is. Yeah. It really broke, doesn't. But I changed my perspective, and that's the thing that I think wealthy people have is they have a different perspective. I don't think I don't think they have more opportunity. I don't think they have more. I think they have more a different perspective. And yeah. for me, if I was upright, I was always going to be a father to my children. I was always going to fight for the love of my wife. But the perspective was, I got to go out here and win. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Start acting as if. Mm. So. You're not going to ask the question. I'll just, I'll, well, I'm going with it. No, you're good. <laughs> you go, this you is go, phenomenal. You <laughs> what, 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 was, what was your first year like um, with with Symmetry? You, you know, um, you came back. Mm -hmm. You said, I, you know, I want 90 days to prove myself. You went to work. You got serious. Mm -hmm. Walk us through these. Like, how, how, how long have you been with Nate? And I've been at Symmetry six and a half years, going on seven years. Okay. See, it's impressive when you're home. You're like, I was homeless three years ago. People are like, I'll be telling the story and I'm all, I was homeless 47 years ago. People are yeah. like, ah, oh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But uh, my first year with symmetry was the hardest thing I'd ever done, but it was worth it. I always tell people, don't ask if it's hard, ask if it's worth it. So it was hard because there was a lot of things that, that were in me that had to come out that were bad. And there were a lot of good things in me that had to come out to create power and wealth. And, and so, um, I had a lot of bad habits. I think if you look at any person, I'm, I'm talking to you and what I hear you talk about a lot, you're saying one thing, but I'm hearing it's habits, habits, habits. Hab I think all wealthy people have great habits. Mm -hmm. And so what I had to change was my bad habits. And so that first year, Nate Offred had a lot of great habits because he had a great mentor that I had to take and, and change. Um, what was the worst habit you had? that you've totally fixed and it's the complete opposite now. I don't know if I'll ever fix it because I think it's, it was so natural to me. It was so comfortable. We know that mm. comfort is where things go to die. I know where you're going. I'm a procrastinator. Hi, my name is Marlon. I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's, it is, it's, 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 it's human nature. It's, it's what everybody, you know, well, I just hired Coach Michael Burt to work with me. He says something. He says things. The power of what he says, he talked about, he teaches his mind. The first person you negotiate with every morning is yourself. And I know I'm a procrastinator, so I wake up and I start to do things to keep me from procrastinating. If I don't, like sometimes on the weekends, I'm a procrastinator. Yeah. My wife's like, can you clean the this or can you go pick up stuff? And do I'll, it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow, baby. You know? <laughs> You know, I worked hard and the kids got basketball games and I'll get, I'm a procrastinator. But here's, here's what I know that there's pain that hurts and there's pain that alters. The pain that hurts is, is not being able to, to buy my son tennis shoes to play basketball. A story I tell is my daughter, we went to 
one, I, I don't want to say the name of the store. I went to a big store and I, I bought her these really inexpensive soccer shoes. They were $13. That's all I could afford. They ripped and they tore um, like two days later and I took them back and I yelled and screamed at the lady because I didn't have money to buy more. But oh. she said, I'll give you your money. She said, I'll give you a store credit. They didn't have any more of my daughter's size. And so I fought for 30 minutes to get money to go to the another store to get shoes. The pain, that's pain that hurts. Pain that alters is when I would go to the refrigerator when I was living at home with my wife and my kids and I'd look in the refrigerator and I'd count meals and I'd turn around and count kids and I'd have more kids than I had meals. That's the pain that alters. Mm. The pain that alters is I was sitting at a buddy's house drinking and, and, and playing video games as a 35 year old gentleman and my wife calls me and we're on food stamps at the time and she says the food stamp card won't work and I said well I'm busy I need to figure it out that's pain that alters you so that first year I ran towards here's a good one okay good people people may not get this um, the way to beat procrastination is to run towards pain gosh I love that I, I run towards things that I don't like to do the reason I procrastinate is because I don't like to do them. Like the cold shower. Like the cold, like the cold showers, which I'll tell that story in a minute. Mm-hmm. I run towards things. First thing in the morning, I get up, I meditate, I read a book, I listen to audio, I go to the gym, I come home and take a cold shower. Why? Because I have to trick my brain into doing something I don't want to do. That's right. I've done it for a year now. Listen, it was 30 degrees in Oklahoma the other day. When, when, when it's 80 degrees outside, you take a cold shower, Man, it's a little discomforting. Dude. When it's 30 degrees and you take a cold shower, I become a woman in so many words. Like, I, I'm either cussing myself out. I don't want to do it, but I stay in there until I absorb it and I realize that I'm doing it and I stay in there until I enjoy it and then I get out. I can take a cold shower for five minutes or 30 minutes until I trick my brain into understanding why. My first year at Symmetry, I had to beat that demon a procrastination out of me. And I did it because I had a great mentor in Nate Alford. I had a great mentor in, in Brad Smith. Mm. I had a great mentor in Matt Smith. I had a great mentor, the number one guy at Symmetry Financial Group, Edward Pritchett. He's one of my biggest fans. He, this guy is by the buck. He does everything that he's supposed to do, but he told me I do them because I realize if I don't, it'll break me. Like I asked him one time, why do we read? Because we hear people, wealthy people read. I said, why do you read? He said, if I don't read, at some point the money's going to break me. So I, I forced myself to read. Now I substituted by listening to a lot of audios. But the first year at Symmetry, I had to get rid of a lot of bad habits. And I'm thankful for all those gentlemen I just named. A guy like Brian Delaney, who had no um, financial gain in my future, would take time on the phone with me. And they wouldn't yell at me and say, you're wrong, you suck. You, Hey, Marlon, have you ever thought that if you go do what you want to do, you can go do what you get to do? Mm. So these guys, I'm getting mentorship. And, and like you said earlier, I'm gravitating towards guys who have great energy, guys right. that are positive. Guys, I, I stopped the two most important decisions my mom told me you'll ever make is where you'll spend eternity and who you hang out with. Mm. Now, they say it different in success books. They say you're the, you're, your wealth is the equivalent of the five people that you hang around with. Well, Network is your net worth. Your yeah. network is your net worth. But here's the thing that I tricked. Most people don't believe that. Oh, 100, 100 and I didn't believe it either. I didn't either. I thought it was cheesy. I thought that was dumb. Well, that I, I can have my buddies Yeah, that, that are working at Quick Trip, and, and Quick Trip's a great company, but th- th- I can't get to where I'm getting to working at a cashier at Quick Trip. If I do, I better be doing something on the side. That's right. I can't get to where I'm getting to when you're going to 9 to 5, and you're happy for the weekends, and I'm waking up happy about Monday because I get to go get it. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy about Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. And I, I can't be around you because we don't have the same birds of the feather flock together. Yeah. So I realized when I started changing the people, it's it's the foundational thing in my life that I'm studying right now is you can change. This is the reason why. Listen, let me let me talk to some of you guys. Hi, my name is Marlon. I'm a procrastinator. Have you ever been to an event, some sort of event? You're, you're going to 10x. Uh, tomorrow. I leave tomorrow. It starts Friday. Starts Friday. Unbelievable. You're sitting second row. Second row. Can I say that? Unbelievable. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. I called you to ask you how much money. Second row. Why? Association. If if you ever gone to an event and you came home and you weren't really that changed, here here's why I think it is. I don't know it all. I think the reason that you're not changed is because your mentality changed, but your environment didn't change. Wow. So when I go back 
and I'm an eagle, and I've just been with a bunch of eagles, and these guys are soaring high, and they're rising above the storm, not running from it like a chicken, and they're flying, and they're on a cliff, and you only see eagles by themselves. You don't see them with everybody else, and you come back, and you're around a bunch of chickens. At some point, if I'm around a bunch of chickens, what I do is not what they do, and I want to fit in because I like being liked, and I start doing chicken activities. Not that the event didn't change me. The event changed my mentality, but if I don't change my environment, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely true. So when I come back from events that first year at Symmetry, I changed my associations. And I have a lot of great friends. That doesn't mean I I kicked them to the curb. Right. That just means I spent more time with guys that had what I wanted. Smaller doses. Smaller doses, brother. I love you. Hey, we can go out. Let's go out next month and watch the fights. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Hey, can you come over tomorrow? Actually, I'm working. I'm at the office. I'm staying late. Hey, I got up at 3 o'clock this morning to read. It's 7 o'clock. I'm tired. And did you, you guys heard that, right? I got up at 3 o'clock. <laughs> like dude it's it's insane i freaking love it like i'm pushing myself a little harder recently because i've got my power five you mm -hmm. know 5 a.m club workout write goals learn and cold shower mm -hmm. and i wimp out of the cold shower every once in a while mm -hmm. you know when i heard 3 a.m mm -hmm. meditate for an hour mm -hmm. work out for an hour learn for an hour and and cold showers are nothing to me when i heard that in dallas at nate's event i'm like Dang, this dude's out. This dude's out working me. Mm. This dude's out doing me. You don't like that? No, I don't like that. <laughs> it's I, Cody Askins, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> dude, I hate it. I like, dude. Marlon Faulkner is. Uh, he's 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 legit. Hey, if you love this video and you want to get your phone skills up, I got the video for you how to nail the first thirty seconds of a call. Go right there, click on that video, and I'll see you there. Hey, insurance phone calls are tough. Nobody wants to pick up the phone. Everybody struggles to do this and i'm going to show you how to nail the first 30 seconds of an insurance phone call right now there's several mistakes